Hi, JNM here with a new Blender tutorial in that I want to show you how to create an animated render with a hard surface model and the EV real-time rendering. You can see it here embedded, it's an MP4 video. So let's open Blender, this is version 2.90 and I will show you step by step how to do this. Here you can see the hard surface model. I created this with my free JMesh Tools add-on and it consists of several separate objects. Now I enable the material preview so that you can see the materials that are assigned. And in the render properties you see I'm using Eevee. And I enabled ambient occlusion and also the bloom effect to let the emissive material really shine and glow. For the shadows I use a very high quality. Ok, so let's have a look at the shaders. Here in the shading workspace and you see they are very simple here for the lights. I use an emission shader with a red tone and a high strength. Then we have a principal shader for the darker material and a light one for the metal, which has a lower roughness value, but could even be a bit less. Okay, nice. Now let's go to the render preview so that we can see how it will look like when it is rendered. It's a bit dark because we set the background in the world settings to a dark color, to a dark tone. And we have just one light, a point light in the scene. And that's not enough, so the first thing I do is to add more lights. So I press Shift and A and go to Lights, select an area light. Then I snap the view and press G to move the light over here. Then use the gizmo to rotate it. In the properties for the light, I increase the strength, quite high I set it to 500 and the color I set to a bluish tone. This is just an example, doesn't have to be blue, just try what works for you and what doesn't. Now I go ahead and press Shift and D to duplicate the light, then again rotate it towards the model. Like that, and then I set this to a red tone, or kind of orange. Eevee gives us a real-time preview in the viewport, but I want to see how it looks like when I render this, so I will adjust the camera now. Select the camera and press 0 on your numpad, and then press G with the camera selected, and then you can move it around to find the location from that you want to render. And that looks fine to me, so I press the F12 key and render one image. So it looks nice, but it is just an image. But I want to create a movie with animations and this is what we are going to add next. Ok, so first let's increase the size of the timeline a bit. And the movie, the animation will be quite short, I set the frame count to 140. And now let's come to animations. The first object that I want to animate are these metal bars. Now you see here you can select them in object mode and press S followed by Y to constrain to the Y axis and scale them and this scaling I want to animate with the keyframe animation. The first problem that you can notice here is that the object is scaled from the origin of the geometry. But I want to start the scaling about here from this face. So I switch to the edit mode and select this face. Then I set the cursor to active which is the face that we just selected. And set the transform pivot point here in the toolbar to the 3D cursor. And when I press S now followed by Y, I can scale like that. And that's what I need for the animation. Ok, but how to animate? First I enable this automatic keyframe insertion. So anytime I transform, for example I press the S key, then a keyframe is inserted at the position of the playhead, the current frame. 
So this means when I go for instance to frame number 40 and scale or rotate or move an object, then the new values for the transform, in this case the scale, will be stored for the new keyframe that is inserted. The values between the keyframes are interpolated and the result is, yeah, an animation, a tween. Ok, now I selected the first keyframe and press Ctrl and C to copy it, then move to frame number 140, which is the last frame, and press Ctrl and V to paste it. Ok, and now we can move the playhead and see a preview of the animation. And with this technique you can animate everything. Ok, the next animation for this object. The same technique, I select this face, set the cursor to active. Enable again auto keyframe, insertion. Select the object and add scale, keyframes, at different locations in the timeline. Ok, you see every time I scale, and press the Enter key, a keyframe is created. And again I copy the first keyframe to the last frame in the timeline. The goal is to create a cyclic animation. The next step is to add a rotation for all the objects of the model and animate this. So first I set the cursor to the center, and then press Shift and A to add an empty object. Then in the Outliner, I select all objects except the light, the camera and the empty object. And after that I select the empty object and press Ctrl and P to parent. Now empty is the parent of the other objects. And I can select it and do a transformation and all the other objects are transformed as well. This means moved, scaled or rotated. And then we use this behavior for the animation, enable again auto keyframe insertion, then press the key R and then enter to add the first rotation keyframe at frame number 0, then go to the last frame, press R again and type in 360 to rotate the MT 360 degrees. A problem appears it isn't rotated 360, it's rotated 180. I don't know why, perhaps you know, but it's easy to fix, I just type in 360 and to have some variations I use minus 360 for the Y and the Z axis. Ok, and when I preview the animation this looks interesting. But you see it's not a linear interpolation, which is nice as well, but I want it to be linear interpolated, because then I can create a seamless looping animation. Ok, so let's see how to change this. I go to the dope sheet, and here you see the lines for the rotation, and my wording wasn't correct. We are not going to change it to a linear interpolation, we are going to change it to an, to an extrapolation. So select this here. There is a difference actually, if you like, search for inter versus extrapolation. We go back to the timeline and start the animation and you see this is a linear rotation. No slowing down in the end. And we can go with that. Ok, and now we go back to the rendered preview and I want to animate one more thing, a property of a shader and this is the strength of the emission. So I select an object that has the emission shader as material, select the material tab and then to animate the strength I enable auto keyframe insertion and then I click this icon on the right side of the strength. For the first frame I set the strength to 0, then at this frame, frame 70, I set it to 35, 
and for the last frame, again to zero. Ok, and now this glow effect is animated as well. I don't know if it looks so great in this animation, but I just wanted to show you that you can animate almost everything. Ok, the next step will be the render, so I press zero on the numpad to get a view through the camera. Then I go to the render properties and I want the output, the dimension to be a square. So I set the resolution to 1080 for X and Y. Then I press G to adjust the camera a bit. You can also press G and hold the middle mouse button pressed and move the mouse to zoom in and out. And this is the view that I actually want to render. So I set the file format to a video format. I use FFmpeg. Then set the output directory. And after that the encoding, for which I use H264. I use a high quality. And then we are ready to render the movie. And to do this press Ctrl F12. Now this takes some time, but I speed this up for you. And when the rendering is completed, you can open your movie. So that's it guys for a simple EV rendering. If you like the video and my channel, then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on my social media on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. And please tell me if you're interested in more animation and movie tutorials. Thanks for watching guys and I see you in the next one here on JNM.